Hi everyone, in this video we will be talking about the French Revolution. We are going to be identifying major causes and describing major effects of the French Revolution. We will also compare the causes, characteristics, and consequences of the American and French Revolutions, and we will identify the impact of political and legal ideas contained in the Declaration of the Rights of Man and Citizen. By the time that we are done, you will be able to describe the causes and effects of the French Revolution, compare and contrast the French and American Revolutions, and summarize how the Enlightenment ideas influence French Revolution. First, let's discuss what the social classes in France looked like before the French Revolution broke out. The population was divided into three different classes known as estates. In the first estate, you have the clergy. Those are your church officials. And they only make up 0.5% of the population, but they make all of the political decisions together with the king. Uh, beneath that, you have the nobility. Um, those are your rich people, your, your landowners. They make up the second estate, and they're only 1.5% of the population. The 98% of the population, everyone else, was made up of peasants and upper middle class um, in the third estate. In this political cartoon, um, it represents the three estates. The man in purple is the clergy, that's your first estate, and the man in red here is your second estate, the nobility, and the man in the uh, white here uh, makes up the third estate. Um, the political cartoon is trying to tell us that the burden of the first and second estate falls on everybody in the third estate. They are the ones who work the fields, they are the ones who support um, the country uh, because they are the only ones who pay taxes. So let's talk about the causes of the French Revolution. The estate system is a major cause of, this, of the French Revolution because it, it symbolizes social inequality. The government had very large debts with heavy interest to pay, and this is due to the extravagant spending from previous kings on their courts, on their palaces, and on the lavish parties and lifestyles that they lived. Um, they also have ambitious wars that they've undertaken, um, wars between France and in Great Britain and also by helping the American Revolution with money and supplies. Um, this country needed tax reform. The nobility didn't want to pay taxes. They never had to before and they resisted any tax reform. Pe the peasants and the bourgeoisie, that is the middle class, they paid all the money. We also see an absolute monarchy with a very weak king. King Louis XVI is incapable of making any decisions. He was uh, into himself, didn't really care about being king, and he was heavily influenced by his wife, Marie Antoinette. Here's a picture of Marie Antoinette and their children. Um, they had four children. You only see three pictured here because the baby died um, when she, right before she turned one, and Marie Antoinette, um, the story goes that she asked for a painter to paint over the bassinet because it made her too sad to see the image of her baby who had passed away. Um, this is Marie Therese, she is the oldest girl uh, and the oldest child. Um, this is Louis, he is also, um, he, he will grow up in, uh, to be um, the future king. And this here is uh, the youngest son, um, he died when he was about seven years old from tuberculosis. Um, Enlightenment ideas also caused the French Revolution. They are very appealing to that middle class, the bourgeoisie, and um, they particularly like the idea of challenging the king's absolute power. The American Revolution is another cause of the French Revolution. Um, through the American Revolution, France is int introduced to the idea that a republic is superior to a monarchy, that it is um, acceptable to take up arms against a tyrant, and that liberal freedoms for all men should be guaranteed and protected. They also particularly like the idea that there should be no taxation without representation in the government. On top of all of the problems that France is experiencing during that time, um, we see that Mother Nature is not going to be very forgiving. There are multiple crop failures and that result in high prices for bread. Um, Paris becomes a, a city that is overcrowded with very hungry and dissatisfied people. And um, 
Around the same time, we will see the invention of the guillotine, um, which was nicknamed the National Razor. This machine with a heavy blade is used for beheading people. Um, it was considered a more humane form of execution rather than chopping someone's head off with an axe. And um, because of this invention, uh, 40,000 people were executed during the French Revolution, including King Louis XVI, Marie Antoinette, and one of the leaders of the revolution, Robespierre. So let's look at the timeline of events that led to the French Revolution and, and major events from the French Revolution. On May 5th of 1789, the United States General, which is the legislature of France, was called to meet to discuss tax reform. Um, King Louis, during that meeting, refused to listen to the Third Estate's complaints, and uh, the Third Estate was quite angry about his uh, treatment of the lower class. Um, so on June 20th, 1789, um, the Third Estate took the tennis court oath. Um, they moved their protest to a nearby tennis court where they gave a number of speeches and vowed to create a new constitution for France. The French Revolution began on July 14th of 1789 when a French prison known as the Bastille was broken into. and. Um, this prison contained a lot of political prisoners who were released, including Voltaire, one of the Enlightenment thinkers, who spoke out against the, the uh, freedom of, of spoke out in favor of freedom of the press and freedom of speech. Um, he, this prison also had a lot of weapons that were necessary for a revolution, and so again, this event marks the beginning of the French Revolution. The Great Fear began in July 17th of 1789 when rumors started to spread that the king had hired robbers to kill peasants. Um, peasants were were plagued with panic and so they broke into the homes of the nobility and killed and robbed them. The Declaration of the Rights of Man was signed on August 26th of 1789. This is the French version of the Bill of Rights. Um, in this document, uh, people are guaranteed the freedom of speech, press, and religion, and uh, also there are protections for citizens uh, for, for false arrest. The women played an important role in the French Revolution. Um, women marched to the Palace of Versailles on October 5th, 1789, and demanded bread for their families. Um, this They also forced the king and his family to go to Paris, and the family was imprisoned by the Third Estate as a result. On January 21st, 1793, King Louis XVI, who had attempted to flee and launch a counter-revolution against the revolutionaries um, was found guilty of treason and when he was executed by guillotine there was a great celebration in France. A lot of European countries who were worried that these revolutionary ideas might spread to their uh, their region uh, started to send troops to fight the revolutionaries but they were unsuccessful in stopping the revolution. On September 5th of 1793, the reign of terror begins, and during that time, people who, any person who was suspected of being uh, in, in, in opposition to the revolution were considered traitors, and they were executed. Um, it's estimated that, that about 2,400 people in Paris alone were killed, and a total of 30,000 in France were killed during this revolution by a guillotine. On October 16th of 1793, Marie Antoinette, who was hated by the French revolutionaries and blamed for everything wrong in France, um, she was found guilty of treason on trumped up charges and she was also executed. In a twist of irony, on July 17th of 1794, one of the leaders in the French Revolution in the Reign of Terror um, began to disagree with revolutionaries and he was overthrown and guillotined as well. Uh, after that, France was ruled by a group of five leaders known as the Directory and because they are too inexperienced and weak, uh, they are easily overthrown by Napoleon. On October 9th of 1799, uh, Napoleon used the military to overthrow the Directory and he established a dictatorship. And in the next lesson, we will talk more about Napoleon, his rise to power, and his time as the dictator and, and emperor of France. Okay. 
And that brings us to your next journal. How were the American and French revolutions similar and how were they different? And I want you to give two examples of each of these. If you have any questions, bring them to class and thank you for watching.